guys, it's Tara. So today I'm going to be doing a current inspirations, current favourites video and these are all a collection from the past two months, so May and June. I just didn't have time to film one um, last month, so <laughs> I'm kind of just merging it together, but I still love like everything that I've written down, so it's still relevant and yeah, hopefully you find some new things out of this. I'll be talking about music, shows, clothing, experiences, um, people, Instagrams, just a whole bunch of things, so yeah, get excited to watch this video. If you've been up to anything interesting, let me know down below, because I love reading your comments, even though it takes me a while to respond to them, I read them all. I thought I would merge it by sort of like favourite types and categories and things like that, so I think I'll start with music. Um, I just have a couple like artists, albums, and YouTube channels that I've been really into. I've been loving Harry Styles' new album, um, that was part of my May favourites. <sighs> Harry Styles is a god. I actually love him. <laughs> I'm seeing him next year in concert. I'm super excited. And yeah, if you haven't listened to his new album, regardless of if you like One Direction or not, like you should listen to it. It's completely different to One Direction. Um, Harry's his own person. It's very pop rock. Each different song has a different vibe to it and I think that's really awesome and yeah, so definitely check it out. He is so talented. Like even if you don't like his music, you have to admit he is talented. I've also been loving Anderson Pack's Malibu album. It's really chill, but it still has rap in it, and I'm kind of getting into the rap music, but very slowly, so I'm super into chill music as well, so Malibu album is so perfect for this. I also just got back into Cosmo Pike. Like, I knew about him a while ago, completely forgot about his music, because he only had social sites out, and then I stumbled across, like, more of his music again, and I was like, oh my god, you have a whole album? So that's been playing, um, all of the tunes are so good. He definitely has that same sort of vibe, it doesn't sound too similar to King Cruel, but I know a lot of people are like comparing him to King Cruel, but like they sound really different, but they have that same sort of vibe because they're from the same part of like London? Is it London or England? I don't know. And then I also have two YouTube channels that are really awesome for finding new music. Um, the first one is Alona. Chevrolet's. They have really nice thumbnails and they're all by different artists so that's a really great place to find new artists as well. Basically just has a bunch of like different music on there, mainly like small SoundCloud people so it's really really awesome to find smaller people and cool artists all at once. And the second YouTube channel was actually recommended to me when I was doing an Instagram live stream. Um, one of my followers, I can't remember who, I'm sorry, but they recommended Colors, the YouTube channel, and it has the same concept except it's the artist and they're singing or performing their song in front of like a nice coloured background. It's so aesthetically pleasing. I love it. It's like a mixed genre, so all different types of music. Really, really awesome for inspiration as well. And that will be linked below because Colours is kind of a hard YouTube channel to search up. So moving on to like media, show, so like shows and movies. One show that I watched in May was Master of None. I know it's like a super popular show right now, but I watched it and it was so, so good. It's not like full on comedy, but it has like humorous aspects to it and talks about a lot of social issues. And it's by the comedian Aziz Ansari. Talks about his life and, and it adapts like some of his real life stories to this show. And it is just hilarious. I love him. He's such a funny person. And the inclusion of like all these social issues is so good. I saw this meme, I'm gonna put it on the screen, and it was just so funny. Like if you've seen Master of None and you understand like that's the social issue references and stuff, you'll find this so funny. But <laughs> um, yeah, white people. <laughs> yeah, so definitely check out Master of None, it's on Netflix and such a good show, one of the best I've seen. I also recently watched Blue is the Woman's Color. I've been meaning to watch it for years, like ever since high school, but I just never watched it because it's three hours long. And I was like, I don't want to spend three hours watching a movie, but I finally sat down and watched it. It's on Netflix as well, and it's so good. It's definitely for older people. There's a lot of nudity and sex scenes, but yeah, it is awesome. Um, it's a very white show and it explores like this new lesbian couple and it's just like beautifully filmed. Like I love the cinematography of it. That's 
for a book, I saw Roxanne Gay speak during the Sydney Writers Festival at UNSW and it was like a free event that we went, I went with my sister and her friends. Yeah, so I saw her speak, she is amazing and we also bought her books. I hadn't actually read Bad Feminist before I saw her speak but I already knew she was like an awesome speaker and person and I knew that I would love this book so we bought it and I'm still reading it but it's a collection of essays so I just read like I try and read a chapter a day which is an essay a day and it's only a couple pages each but my sister and I have been writing little notes and highlighting stuff to each other in this which is really awesome and we also met Roxanne Gay afterwards she signed our book and I had a full-on conversation with her it was really really exciting um I was like shaking I was like oh my god because um the people organizing were like okay you have to hurry up you can't speak too long like don't take too long taking pictures and all of that so we were just like okay cool and then I got up there and Roxanne was like she like was signing our book she was like oh okay nice to meet you blah blah, blah. and then she looked up and she's like girl your outfit and I was like and we had a full-on conversation about my outfit for like I want to say three minutes three to yeah three minutes sounds accurate she's just so lovely I love her work and she said that she would never forget me because of my crazy outfit <laughs> so that was a highlight of May um, and also Bad Feminist is awesome it's definitely good it just basically talks about being a feminist but not being that perfect ideal feminist that everyone wants to be but it's so hard to be and it talks about her experiences as a black woman and you know like sexual violence that she's experienced and her opinions on certain things and while reading it you should just remember that it is her thoughts her experiences her opinions and that it's not factually always correct because it is based on her thoughts but I do think it is an awesome insight and there is a lot of relevant things in this and I'm still in the process of reading it so it's still good I'm totally like I totally recommend that and I'm definitely down to read more of her books afterwards I need to move the car so as if I moved I had to move the car outside <sighs> oh my god I'm like I would like ran right downstairs um, so I'm going to be talking about some events that I went to. I went to a bunch of events the past two months. This is just like event season, I swear. Um, so the first one is Fashion Week. That was basically like four days of shows, but I had a bunch of friends go as well. And I was like, it was just such a good time. I made a vlog and my outfit video as well. If you guys haven't seen that, you should. i um, super happy with that. And it was just like such a good week. My camera broke though, so that was annoying, but it was fine. Like, I didn't feel the need to take too many photos. The layout of Fashion Week this year wasn't as good as previous years just because they like condensed it down to like three main days although there were like four days of shows. It was more time efficient though. So I saw a bunch of designers that were really awesome and I met a lot of cool people as well. I got shot for a lot of cool publications at the end of my Fashion Week vlog. If you guys stuck around to the end of that video, you would have seen like I got shot by Hypebeast, Hypebay, ID Magazine, and then I was in a bunch of like videos as well. So people on Facebook were like tagging me in so many different things for like your mom's your dad. Um, I don't know his name, but like he does viral Facebook videos. I think his name's like Alan or something. I have no idea, but it was for MTV and things like that. So that was cool. Another event was Roxanne Gay speaking as well. Also semi-permanent, like semi-permanent is an art design event. My sister was working on the event with the sponsorship team and I actually like used to work for the same sponsorship agency in the past. So I had been in the past and I got a free ticket through that because I did some work on semi-permanent as well, but um, I wasn't working on it this, this year and my sister couldn't go on one of the days. I think it was Saturday. I got her wristband, which was like a VIP one and I got like free food and all of this cool stuff. I also saw my friend Audrey there and I met like some lovely people as well. A lot of connection. Yeah, it was a really good experience. It, experience. it was just like a bunch of people talking about different things they've been doing in the art and design industry. And an event this month was TEDx Sydney. That was so good. It was. I went last year as well. Well, and I went to the youth event the year before. Um, the youth event is actually coming up this year. My sister curates for the TEDx Youth at Sydney, so yeah, I know some of the team, and yeah, so you guys should come. I'm gonna be there the whole day, and it's gonna be really exciting. But I went to the main event this year, it was open to all, so there wasn't an application process, anyone could buy tickets. It was at the ICC, and I don't know how I felt about the venue. It was like it was nice, but it was just so big and so many people. They usually have it at the Opera House. I did have to skip like two speakers though because I had a test. 
but it was so easy. It was like five minutes till to uni. It sucks because I missed Andy, one of the really good speakers who did like sign language. Um, and I'll talk about sign language later as well. And I met him after at the after party and like hung out with his cousin. I'm really bummed that I missed that, but I can watch it online. But he like did Bohemian Rhapsody in Auslan and that's just like so cool. But there was some really, really awesome speakers. Jeff, like I was talking to one of the youth curators with Nat and she was just talking about how this year like there weren't any new ideas and I totally could see that. There were like great speakers but they were just, there was no new ideas. Um, but one of the speakers that I did really like, I can't remember her name, so I'll have to put it on the screen. She's a Muslim woman and she talked about unconscious bias, racism, xenophobia, things like that. And it was just really awesome, especially because the audience was very white. And I just really enjoyed her talk. And there was also another lady, can't remember her name, but she is a healer for indigenous people. And her story was so moving and it touched the heart and I just... It was so beautiful. Definitely once those talks come out online, I'll link it below. Um, but it was just wonderful. It was a really awesome day. I met some really awesome people. The after party was at home bar randomly. It was like such a random venue, but I met lots of people there as well. It was a good time. And the last event I'm going to be talking about is one that my work hosted and it was an Auslan or Australian sign language event. And basically one of our heroes at my work, which is people that like help our care seekers. Her name's Claire and she did she taught us like the basics of Auslan and so now I can do the sign the alphabet in Auslan which is really exciting and my friend Alice and I have been practicing my chat my friend my chat my friend Chet also came and it was so great it was such a good night yeah so I can sign the alphabet and I know a couple words but I still need to work on it because I always forget the words Alice and I are gonna like learn on YouTube and practice with each other and I think it's gonna be it's such a good like language to know I'm gonna be talking about food two restaurants in May that I went to and they were so good the first one was after the Roxanne Gay talk called Moroccan Feast in Randwick oh my god it's like Okay, it's very similar to Turkish food, except a bit different. Oh my god, the fresh bread there with the dips. So good. And like, I am in love. I need to go back there ASAP. I also went to Golden Lotus in Newtown. It's a common, it's like a well-known vegan restaurant right near the station. They have really awesome like fake meats. We, I went with Mish and Alice and this was a while ago, but damn, I need to go back there. And it was pretty affordable as well. So I definitely re recommend going there if you're from Sydney. And then I just had two Instagram accounts that I want to talk to. So I don't know if this is kind of weird, but um, but th these are also two of my new friends that I've made. So the first one I met in May and we're really good friends now. And her name's Evie or Ifke. She's from Germany doing au pair. So she's here for a couple months and I'm going to be so sad when she leaves, but she's extended her stay. So I'm so excited and I love her. And definitely she's like become one of my my closest friends we went to fashion week together i haven't actually seen her in a while but she is the best her username is if gay is not home her name is spelled evke which is if gay but everyone just calls her evie it's a bit confusing and people always ask me about it she seriously has the best clothes best style and oh my god guys you will die i love her account so much and she's just the sweetest person she's i'm definitely want to film an identity video with her i told her i wanted to do that a while ago but I haven't actually followed through with that so we need to film that th these holidays she is wonderful like check her out I also met I can't remember when I met her I think it was like two months ago maybe but Frida or Ko aka Koala on Instagram I literally save all of her photos because they are like fire she's a photographer slash sort of model I guess um, but her photos are so pristine at her style. She's so sweet. She's based in LA, but she came to visit Sydney for a bit. She curated a ex an exhibition or something. I can't remember. She is so cool. I love her. So the last thing I'm going to be talking about is some fashion favorites that I've had over the past two months. Um, I've been wearing these a bunch. Uh, I have a lot of earrings to show you. Firstly, with clothing, um, I have a vintage Puma windbreaker from Sydney Vintage. That I'm like I worked with Sydney Vintage so they sent it to me it's two guys own it I don't know what one of the guys names is but I'm like like I'm online friends with Jules which is one of the guys who owns it he's he's really funny and like I follow him on his personal as well and he's a good guy but yeah so they sent it to me been wearing it 
a bunch it's so easy to just chuck on and they sent me an extra extra large i think so it's like super baggy on me and i love it it's like the perfect fit like what i want a windbreaker to be also i'm in love with this unith bodysuit that i got i actually got it at glee market so it was heaps cheaper than like buying it online but i'm so stoked it's a size small i'm normally a medium so it's a bit of a squeeze and a bit tight down there you know but it's okay like I, I still wear it I just have a wedgie like half the time yeah I'm in love with it I took some photos of it when I first got it because I was so excited and yeah they're just like super cool and I love UNIF and then I just have a bunch of earrings firstly I have race car earrings that my friend Stella made for me I helped her out with her one of her major works and she just gave it to me as a gift and they're so cool I get so many compliments on them I wear it a bunch and it's from her store it's mellow yellow definitely check it out support local young artists and also I have lollipop earrings that I got and it's from Evie Designs check it out as well they're so cute these earrings which I've been wearing non-stop I can't remember the seller's name but I got it at Glee Markets for ten dollars so cool lemon earrings as well they're a bit heavy but I also got them at Glee Markets and they're so cute. I love all my fruit earrings. So that's the end of my video. I hope you guys were inspired or found some new places to visit or things to wear, ideas, things to watch, you know, all of that good stuff. Let me know if you have any recommendations down below. I'll be listing everything in the down bar and also like timestamps for everything. So if you want to like skip back to something, then you can check out that category again. I had a lot of fun filming this and I am collecting ideas and things like that. So if you want me to do more of these, like definitely let me know down below. I know it's a bit of like a, you either like favorite videos or you don't. But I think my favorites were pretty solid. I definitely recommend checking out all of the things that I mentioned. I've spent way too much money on events the past two months and I'm so broke.